I never thought about what would happen if you combined Scrubs with Night in the Woods until I played this game. This is Fall of Porcupine, a story-rich 2D adventure game with a medical backdrop and a whole lot of cardiology. I mean, heart. We play as Finley, new to the town of Porcupine and the medical profession in general. After a fairly serious injury sets him back a few days, Finley returns to learn the rounds at St. Ursula Hospital. Most of what you'll do in Fall of Porcupine is guide Finley through his day, on and off the clock. At work, you'll check in with patients by playing a series of mini-games. Some are a bit of a rhythm game, others play more like quick time events, and others still like Wordle-esque puzzles with symbols. If you're intimidated by the speed or precision required for some of these puzzles, rest assured that the difficulty can be dropped down in the options menu. After completing each task, you'll receive a letter grade as well as an overall grade for your efforts each day. Even without adjusting the difficulty, I never managed to get a letter grade lower than a C, and my mistakes felt fairly inconsequential. When you're not administering shots or prescribing medications to the locals, you are interested interacting with your coworkers, friends, and superiors with branching dialogue paths. The answers you choose can impact your relationships with these characters in and out of the workplace, so it would be wise to choose your words carefully. Outside of the hospital walls, the gameplay is much less play and much more reading. There is also a bit of platforming which, while not very challenging, also didn't feel super necessary. Buses and elevators provide Finley with a bit of a fast travel option when they're running, but even with those modes of transportation, you're still looking at a lot of foot travel. I hope Finley has a podiatrist friend at the hospital and perhaps some orthopedic shoes. The average day begins in Finley's modest apartment, and from there the player can decide which friends to foster relationships with. There's the plant shop owner who tends to all aspects of life and nature. There's your colleague who somehow manages a much more lavish apartment and knows how to make a mean stew. Then there's Carl, who enjoys grabbing a drink at the local tavern and causing a bit of a commotion from time to time. Everyone has a story, and you keep tabs of all of them in your notes app on your phone. Your phone is also how you keep up with your work tasks as you download your schedule each day. The passage of time provides more avenues to explore and more details of the local happenings in Porcupine, opening up the world and adding a bit of history, tradition, and intrigue in the process. In general, I found the progression a little bit slow at times, but there was enough charm, even in the mundane hospital tasks, that I found myself invested in this game's world. I did notice a few minor glitches like text getting cut off on the corners of the screen or a character's AI running out of eye and going in the wrong direction or getting hung up on stairs, but for the most part the game ran like a dream. Load screens could be a bit annoying, but I forgave them each and every time I got to see a new scene in this gorgeous environment. Fall of Porcupine feels like a living, breathing piece of art. Each avenue and alleyway is crafted with warmth and love from the creators of this game. Lines are imprecise with an autumnal color palette that made me long for the fall season, even if I'm not ready to skip summer just yet. It's so easy on the eyes, it almost lulled me to sleep a few times reading through the long text segments. Not out of boredom, just out of comfort. Speaking of text, you can actually turn off the stylized text font in the options menu for reading ease. It may sound small, but having accessibility options like this ensure that more people can actually play and enjoy this title, and I think that's beautiful. Music is super chill, but really fits the vibe of the game as a whole. Beautiful and comforting, like a hot cup of apple cider on a crisp fall day. Nothing felt out of place or jarring unless it was meant to be for suspense. No voice acting interrupts the soundtrack, though there is a text scrolling sound that blends right in. It's subtle and charming, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Fall of Porcupine definitely feels like it's trying to follow in the footsteps of Night in the Woods, and for the most part, it succeeds. It definitely did not have the same kind of emotional impact on me personally, and I can only guess that it's a 
bit of a less universally relatable setting. The medical backdrop immediately reminds me of so many other shows and movies, but I don't really connect with that type of environment because it's not as much of a part of my lived experience. Sure, many of the themes are still prominent and transcend the specific settings and occupation, but it's just a bit of a layer of separation for me. The game is mechanically sound and absolutely gorgeous to behold, a real treat for my tired eyes and a wonderful way to unwind. A great assortment of accessibility options is also a huge plus, as is the thoughtful dialogue choices and charming soundtrack. There were moments I grew tired of the mini games or wished the story would progress a little bit faster, but my overall takeaway was very positive. Fall of Porcupine tells a great story with some of my favorite art I've seen this year. Poignant, pretty, and full of life.